Good morning. Good morning. We're doing another four minute presentation on the artwork in the church. And we're going to start with the figure of St. Peter and St. Paul, which you see up to the left here. St. Peter holding the keys, the keys of the kingdom from Matthew 16. And over to uh, the, uh, my right, um, St. Paul. These two figures, St. Peter and St. Paul, the leaders of the, uh, the apostles, one to the Gentiles, one to the Jews, come to Rome. And again, Rome is the place that had Jesus killed. Rome was the center of all the evil power at the time. And it was there that these two witnesses went forward and there that Christ was victorious. It completely conquered the city, eventually it becoming the seat of the church. So we're gonna start there. Now this the slide you see, this is a, a, a sketching of St. Paul's Basilica after the fire of 1823. But you can still see what we've been talking about the last few weeks, this image of Christ over the altar, along with the 24 elders and the four living creatures. And again, for those who haven't been here before, this was a general scheme that the artist who decorated this church wanted to use to show that what's given in the book of Revelation and today given in John 6, that they, that <coughs> teaching is fulfilled among us here as we celebrate the Eucharist. So after the church uh, was uh, put a new roof on it, Again, Jesus here, and St. Peter and St. Paul on either side. And that's how our church is decorated. Why is this important? St. Paul is holding a sword, and Hebrews 4.12 teaches us, The word of God is living and effectual, more piercing than any two-edged sword. So when we allow the word of God in, especially as we hear it proclaimed during the liturgy, it's going to cut and heal. That's how it's explained, the two-edged sword. It cuts, but it also heals. Ephesians 6.17, and take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the more we get to know the Word of God, the more we take it in, the more we can use it against the fiery darts of the evil one. Now, over here we see St. Peter holding the keys. This shows us what Jesus did in Matthew 16.9. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, the promise of our Lord in the church, by which we have confidence in the sacrament of reconciliation. It's Jesus' word. And again, the effect of the uh, sacrament of reconciliation is that we know what the man knew to whom Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, rejoice. So again, uh, the original from St. Uh, Paul's Basilica of St. Peter, and then the copy we have here. Now, what we have above, I want to go over now the, uh, these paintings in the center, all of which have to do with the Eucharist. The center scene here is a replica of this painting we saw it a couple weeks ago, which is from a third century catacomb. And it shows the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. We'll see that text in a minute. And then this man dressed in a toga and a pallium, which at the time were things the priests would uh, use. And in the original, you can see it better than here, but it's almost like this blessing this woman holding her hands up in prayer, which was often a sign of those who had uh, died and risen in Christ. They lived completely in Christ. Jesus tells us, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever. Now, next to, in our church, next to this image, there are the two figures of the peacocks over the, uh, the vines. And this is an image of a peacock from the Roman catacombs. The ancients believed, some of them, that uh, the flesh of the peacock never decay. So just like Jesus' flesh when we receive it in the sacrament does not decay, so they believe that this, uh, the flesh of the peacock would not decay. Jesus tells us in John 6, 55, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So again, the peacocks with the grapes, which will become the wine, when we eat of the Lord's flesh and blood sacramentally, in Holy Communion, we will live forever. Right above that, Jesus said unto them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life with it. So all of these images here are there to show us that truth. Now, earlier in John 6, Jesus says, that the people sit down, there was plenty of grass, he took the loaves and fishes, blessed them, distributed them. And so, you see, in this image here, 
to see a fish and a mushroom with loaves of bread. This is a slide of the original, which is from the catacombs of St. Calixtus, 3rd century. And here you see the five loaves of bread. One of the gospel texts talk about the five loaves of two fishes. Our artist added another one for some reason. But that's where it comes from, to show us again this teaching from John 6, so that we may see and believe. And then finally Jesus says, John 6, 56, my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. You see this interesting image of the uh, pelican over here. The pelican was an ancient uh, symbol for Holy Communion. Because the ancients believed the pelican mother, if she couldn't find food for her young, she would take her own flesh and feed her uh, young with that. So all of these show, showing us what we believe about Holy Communion. Over here, the bunches of wheat with the grapes, which will become Holy Communion once they're crushed and uh, put together and blessed for us. So this week, St. Peter and St. Paul in these images. Next week, we'll take a look at the images of our Lord in the mosaics.